So it feels really good to be in a theater. I grew up in a theater. You see, I am a graduate of the School for the Creative and Performing Arts, not too far from here. And I truly, truly, truly loved my high school. I wasn't very talented, but I loved my high school. So I remember this one time, I was a stage manager for a show, and we were in rehearsal. And the kids were goofing off, and they were playing around, and the director said, that's it, we're done. Pack up and go home. And he was so angry that he not only left the room, he left the building. And something inside me said, no. And I turned to my classmates and I said, look, we're staying. The show is only two weeks away and we're not even close to being ready. So you and you get back on the stage and pick up with line 32. And I felt so proud of myself the entire weekend. Come Monday morning, I was called to the director's office. And when I got there, he said, I heard what you did on Saturday. And let me tell you something. If you would have pulled that stunt in the real world, you would have been fired. I said, go home. You should have gone home. Do as I say. Looking back, he was reminding me that my role as a student is one of contributor, not influencer. So I've been in education for over 25 years. Really, I should be retired because, see, I started my teaching career at the age of four. <laughs> I found my passion then. I am the superintendent of Cincinnati Public Schools, the third largest district in the state of Ohio. And it has been a long journey from my time as a student in this district to me being here as a superintendent. But something happened to me a couple of years ago that took me right back to my days in high school. And it made me think how we are conditioned to treat our young people as if they don't have the power to positively shape their own lives or the world around them. You see, there's a big difference between influence and contribute. Now, it's a common belief that we all want our young people to be meaningful contributors to society, right? This is where you guys participate, right? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't agree. I simply do not agree with that. I want more than that for my students. That's not what I want. And the next experience I'm going to talk to you about reminded me that we need for them to be community, city, and dare I say, world influencers. Influence. So in 2017, I was asked to speak at a student leadership conference, and uh, more than 1,000 kids were there from around the region. And I told them, be bold, go back to your schools and make a difference. I told them, start a movement. And I was feeling really good about my talk. I mean, I was in a groove. I felt really good. Uh, I said all the right words exactly the way I wanted to say them. I danced out to the music of Earth, Wind & Fire's song, September. <laughs> all right? So I was doing it. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say I was at least a solid 8. And I was exiting the stage when I was greeted by three young women. And they were so cute. They had their little conference journals in their hand. And they came up to me and they said, we'd like to talk to you about some concerns that we have with the district curriculum. They went on to say that their American history course, they did not see the representation of people of color, with the exception of talking about slavery, 
and Jim Crow laws. They said that every contribution outlined for African Americans had a negative connotation, and they did not like it. Now, to be clear, I was feeling just a little bit defensive. Because you see, at the time, I was the deputy superintendent over what, everyone? You got it, curriculum. So I reached into my purse and I pulled out a card and I said, here's my card. Why don't you send me an email? It'll remind me about this conversation and I'll see if I can arrange a time for us to talk. And the leader of the girls respectfully said, no. <laughs> and I thought to myself, did she really just tell me no? <laughs> and so I guess the other girl read the expression on my face and she said, well, what we mean is we're going to have a meeting at our school with our student body on Thursday at 10 o'clock and we want you to come to our meeting. <laughs> and just like that, I connected back to when I was in high school. So now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story, but first, let me remind you of the definition influencer. For far too long, we have been treating our kids and teaching them that they don't have influence, that their greatest power is in contribution. After all, influence is for adults. But I was reminded by those three persistent young women that you don't have to wait to become an adult to do something meaningful. They have the power to do so right now, and many of them are all over the world. As adults, we need to lift them up and recognize that they have the power to be architects of their own lives by seeing them and by hearing them. As a matter of fact, it's time for us to move away from an obedience contribution model, like when I was in school, and move forward into influence. Especially if we want our young people to be leaders, if we want them to flourish, if we want them to tear down stereotypes, to create policies and design change, all with the moral character that gets revealed when no one's looking. Influence. So back to my story. <laughs> I met with those young ladies and their classmates, and I listened to what they had to say. And they decided to start a culture collaborative in which they would study the cultures of their school, of the kids there. And then they launched a year-long campaign to be able to teach their student body about their cultures. And with the help of their counselor, they wrote and applied for a grant so they could learn about each one of their individual heritage. And get this, they got the grant. So my question to you, all the adults, how often do we set the conditions to truly see and hear our young people? Don't you think it's about time we start? Thank you. <laughs>